When I was uh, young in kindergarten, I, I played rugby league at, at our school where I went to, which was Santa Maria del Monte in Strathfield. Um, the game was deemed a little bit rough there by, by the principal at the time, and so I just uh, enrolled at my local soccer club, which was Strathfield Junior. So I, um, I started at six, and my father um, is from a Croatian background and they're quite passionate about their football so um, it, it was a sport that, that he uh, obviously enjoyed watching. But when you were young you, you used to look forward to your, to your Saturday morning games um, and, and by the same token back in those days whenever it was raining or whatever you would pray that your home phone wouldn't ring because that means you're getting a call that the game's cancelled. Um, I really enjoyed those Saturday mornings back then, would only train maybe once a week. Um, but um, I think Australia was a different country then, you did most of your training with your, with your friends, you know, in your street and, and going to the parks and, and playing around. When I say 14, 15, that's when I say, look, by, by then you're, you're old enough to know um, a little bit about the professions that are waiting for you after school. Um, you see what your interests are, you see how good you are at a particular sport and probably around about that time, say year eight, year nine, uh, around that age, then I thought of, said, you know, look, I'm, start, I'm making these state teams, you know, with, with, uh, with football and I, and I was doing quite well in the national championships against the other states and uh, I, I knew then that uh, you know, I, I want to be a footballer. My recollection was actually that uh, when I got the phone call from Ron Smith to, to leave school and to go there on a scholarship, I remember it was a big discussion for my parents, um, you know, for, for, their, for their son to leave home at a relatively young age was a big decision. Um, but uh, they knew that that was what I wanted to do. And, and, and again, that was when things got a little bit serious. Uh, you, you didn't have your, your, your parents to, to support you, to look after you. You had to, uh, you know, clean things for yourself, be on time for yourself, find your way uh, around for yourself. You had to walk, work off uh, a small budget, financial, that was as a, as a young kid. So that were, that were things that I think gave me good values. I think your, your, your minimum wage was quite small, but at the time Sydney, Croatia, where I was playing, had like a, a big amount to win away from home and a smaller amount to win at home. And, and my uh, NSL debut was against a, a team called Preston at Connor Reserve away from home. And uh, yeah, we, we, we got up that day and, and I scored on debut and the following week to, to receive a, a you know a, a few hundred dollars in the uh, early 90s for a, for a 17 year old kid was uh, was very big money. It, it was great to, to score on debut and it was a it was a memory that I won't forget. But also the the important part was I I, I grew up with uh, with uh, with you know with Popper with with Kalats. Um, there was there was a group of us that that went through the club as juniors and to all come through at the same or similar time was, was very rewarding. I was a Sydney Croatia all up until 20, uh, I was about 22 and then I, I, um, I went to Holland. Looking back now, I think I went too late at 23. Um, you know, back in those days in Australia, we only trained three times a week, uh, semi-professional. So during the day, many of us had uh, either, either jobs or, or or didn't have extra training, so um, it, it was difficult uh, later on in Holland. When I came there at the start, I, I did really, really well. You know, I'd always been the first 11 and I, I was playing comfortably, but uh, in the very first year, I remember when uh, December came and the, and the snow came and the, and the heavy pitches, my body couldn't handle the, the loads. Um, there'd just be one injury to another and I couldn't get a sustained run, but uh, that's why I think I struggled to, to adapt to the conditions. Not, not the pace of the game or the training, it's just that physically I, I wasn't strong enough to, to deal with the demands. And, and then by the time you, you adjust, your years go and, and, you, and you're playing catch up. But um, 
you know, I, I think uh, I played, you know, a good 50 games in, in 50, 60 games in Holland and, and the same in Croatia. Um, and, and I enjoyed the time. I played in the UEFA Cup with, with my club uh, Rijeka in, in Croatia. You know, I came back to Australia at, uh, at 27. I spent a good four years in Europe. Uh, I, I came back a better player for sure. I had a good offer from Sydney United and uh, you know, my, 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 my future wife was with me and I thought, well, I'll, I'll play in Australia, she'll work. When we combine that income, we could just start our, our lives together instead of being at mid-table clubs where, where the opportunities were there to stay in, um, you know, no disrespect, but you know, countries like Belgium and Portugal, mid-table clubs were, were, were places where I, where I could have continued my European adventure. Um, but yeah, I thought it was time to come home. And I wanted to get braces as well. It was just a little silly thing that I had in my head at the age of 27. I wanted to come home and, and get braces. That was something I always wanted to do, and I'd only want to do it in Australia. So yeah, basically get married, you know, wife to work, uh, get braces, start a, it, it was just kind of like, not footballing so much decision, but like I said, I was 27 and I wasn't at that, that high, high level and I thought uh, it's, it's, it's time to come home to Australia. Well, I was captain of the Sydney United team um, and, and individually I was doing quite well, but um, as a team we, we weren't so strong and, and the club received a, back in those days a very, very good offer. They, they received a transfer fee of 110000 which was the record in, at that time for, for the domestic league. And, and basically the president said to me, um, you know, the club's accepted and, and you go to Olympic because they've got a very good squad and, and, and you may have a chance of, of winning something. And it was very difficult for me to leave, but um, at the same time, it was a good step in my career. And, uh, and I had fantastic memories at, at Olympic. I lost one in Sydney United before I went to Holland, yeah. Uh, came back when I was at Olympic. We won the first one against Perth in Perth in, in, in front of good 40,000 people. I had a great team with me at Olympic, and you know, that, that day you could have given the man of the match to Clint Bolton, who had a great game in goals, or Ante Urich at the back. Jade North was great at centre back, but it just happened to be that you know, we won 1 0, and I, and I scored a, a, a really nice goal. and. Yeah, maybe the people that awarded it gave it to the to the guy who scored. I'm I'm not so sure, but yeah, look, you know, all those individual awards, whether top goal scorer or Johnny Warren Player of the Year or Joe Marsden, the Grand Final, they're they're all nice um, individual awards. But uh, you know, you you you'll never forget your, your teammates in the in the ones that you win. The year after, we we lost to Perth in Perth, and we were never in the game. We lost two 0 Remember we conceded a goal from a set piece and we couldn't get back into the game, uh, which was a shame. And then, um, and then I, I played in one grand final with Parramatta Power, again against Perth. And this one we lost in uh, rain, rainy conditions at, uh, at Parramatta Stadium. Yeah, and, and I remember the day after was my, my 30th birthday and I, and I went to go play in Malaysia with Pahang. But, um, we had a very good squad there at Parramatta Power, and it was it was a shame on the day that uh, we didn't finish off as as uh, as victorious champions on the on the last game that was ever played in the old NSL. I came from a generation where uh, no questions asked. Mark Viduka was was a lot better than than me at the time, but uh, you know, I'm, I'm sure I'm not the only one that thinks he probably could have got a a few more caps. To be honest, that's something that uh, that disappoint. It's me still looking back at it, uh, you know. I'm, I'm fortunate enough to, uh, I've played overseas, I've, I've, I've won some things in Australia. I have played for the Socceroos. I had a, I had a good time with the young Socceroos. Um, I'm fortunate with, with the way my career, of course, looked back and, and maybe could have been, uh, you know, a little bit better, could have maybe made some different decisions at different times. But, uh, you know, that, that probably drives me now in my coaching career to, to be more successful in my coaching career than my, my playing career. So um, you, you turn it into a positive. I scored the first hat-trick, which is all good and well. And then when I had three goals to my name, we actually received a penalty. And my penalty taking the, the last two or three years before that was 
was really, really, really good. And I'm disappointed with that penalty I took that day because I, I rushed it. I was too overconfident. I thought, oh, this is four. Fortunately enough for, for the statistics, I had already had the first hat-trick in the A-League, but disappointed to this day that uh, I, I didn't score four that day because looking back now, that extra goal, easy to say, I would have ended up level top goal scorer in the A-League that year. So it did hurt me back then and there was only 21 games that season in the very first A-League season and, and I missed quite a few with injury. But um, I kept that soccer ball as a, as a memento from that day and all the players signed it and, and one day I came home and my young son was kicking with it in the backyard. So yeah, I was um, very, very angry, not more at him, but I think my wife, you know, that, that kind of mem memory. And so all the names and the little comments on the ball are all smudged and gone. So I had visions of maybe putting it up somewhere, but uh, it's gone. It's just a distant memory. <laughs> it's, for the, uh, it's only a ball, I guess. <laughs> yeah, well, I wasn't laughing at the time, yeah, I'll be honest, but uh, how, what do you do? I went to Malaysia and I really just had one year of, you know, basically playing, enjoying myself, no pressure, captain, good bunch of boys and I, w I was re really happy with the decision I, I, I made. After finishing Malaysia, I took, a, I took a player coaching role at Sydney United that I didn't even know if I, if I would enjoy coaching and, and we ended up winning the minor premiership. You know, from there, uh, I got a call from Vashlayan to, to work with him, with the young Socceroos. Again, that had probably to do with him being of Dutch background and me playing in, in Holland. He had some references about me from, from mutual people that we knew. And, and then from there, my opportunity to go to Haar to work with Van Schip was fantastic. And then, and then the opportunity to come back here has been fantastic. To be back in your in, in your home city with the startup club, to achieve what we had had in the first season in such a short space of time, well, was something that that we're all very proud of. But also, we've put ourselves in a situation where you know, there's there's we can definitely still do something this year as well, and 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 we're all very focused in doing so. I've known Papa for a long time. Uh, we're very very close with one another. We always have been. Yeah, and when he when he uh, spoke to me about this, we were both very keen. We, <laughs> between ourselves, we, we we kind of thought, well, if we're going to give it give it a, a shot, we we thought, even though we're both young coaches, that we both had similar ideas and 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 plans, and and we thought coming to a startup club, even though I knew what what work was ahead of us. I mean, coming to a startup club, we could really, um, you know. Set, set down the platform the way we wanted wanted it to work and and it was just a, an opportunity where I, I really believed we could we could make it make it you know relatively successful so again to to come to work with with popper and to be in this region as well and to come home it, it was an opportunity that that had to be taken to to be part of the national team for me, it's it's a step up being an assistant now to work, uh, you know, with Ange and his staff. But also for me, I've I've been four years now constantly an, an assistant in the A League. I think now to work with a different group of players, but also opposition, you know, different styles of of play, get to know different teams and 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 and, and styles and and cultures and and just to learn more more about the game at a at a worldwide scale i think that's something that's uh, very appealing for me and i think the change will do me good so um uh, the, the opportunity for the world cup in the asia cup is 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 massive but again for those other reasons that i've mentioned it's also very very enticing i miss the wanderers but uh you you know whenever possible i'll, I'll attend home games and 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 watch watch very closely and and uh, it's, it's been fantastic for me but again with the platform that that's here and, and the organization I'm, I'm, I'm very confident that not only will finish off this season well but uh, the structures that are in place uh, will, will, will set for for you know a positive impact in the in the upcoming years